à la fois On s'aime, on se dit tout Cet amour est si doux De à la fois On se sent bien partout C'est parce qu'on se dit nous Pour toi Je donnerai tout de moi Je sais que tu y crois Si c'est comme ça l'amour J'en veux partout autour Autour de moi, autour de nous Et qu'il n'en finisse pas D'être le cours des jours Calimera, and today our special guest is an international singer whose warm and beautiful voice has captured the attention of audiences all over the world. We are very happy to have with us the beloved Greek-French singer, George Perry. He's here today to talk to us about the launch of his first English language debut album, Picture This. Good morning, George. Good morning. Good welcome. morning, Yana. Welcome to the United States and Thank welcome you. to Calimera USA here on New Greek TV. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're big fans. Oh, thank you. You have fans all over the world. The <laughs> Greek Americans also have been following you. Uh, you were born and raised in Athens, and we want to hear everything about how George Perry grew up and how he ended up becoming this international star. <laughs> he grew up, because it's a he. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I grew up in a very weird way because my mom is French and my father is Greek. So even though I was born and raised in Greece, Every, from morning till noon, everything was in Greek, Greek school, Greek friends, everything was in Greek. And then as soon as I went back home, everything turned upside down and everything was in French. <laughs> so French music, French TV, French books, French cuisine, everything, you know, was... So I, I, uh, I was had raised a in a... privileged life. Yes, and I was raised in a, in a double way, if you want, so... Two worlds. Yes. Yes. The Greek and the French culture, which is very similar, I must say. Yes, that is true. We both like to complain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure that's not it, all of it. But uh, uh, cultured, wonderful people, very warm. And uh, you grew up uh, uh, singing from the age of four. When I was four, yes, I decided that I wanted to be a, uh, a singer. And um, I went uh, and saw my mom and I told her, you know what? One day, I'm going to be a singer. In Greek or French? And in French. <laughs> I, I was only allowed to speak Mama? in French. Maman. Maman. <laughs> and uh, her reaction was, yeah, yeah, go and, you know, tidy okay. up your room now, and we'll <laughs> discuss about this later. But she was Ten very... Ten years uh, later, we'll talk about she it. She was very wise, though, you know, because she, uh, she brought me to uh, a music school the next day, actually, and I started learning the piano. So she never, you know, told me, you can't do this or you cannot be a singer. Uh, she was very respectful of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Also, I think because um, she realized, especially as I was going through uh, puberty, that, you know, um, there was no other option for me. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I could think of. You can't and, tell uh, <laughs> it's a karma, maybe, you know, that's what they say, that it chooses you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it did choose you. You have a fabulous voice and you've Thank had you the so privilege much. of working with many wonderful people. Uh, you are an idol pop uh, star and uh, your first solo uh, album was uh, My New Day. Kenuria Mumera, yes. Tell me about that. That was an album uh, I released when I was 22 years old, uh, composed by Stefanos Korkolis, who is, who uh, is a wonderful music composer, a very yes. underrated for those of you who don't know, uh, Stefanos Krokulis is a fabulous uh, uh, music composer, not only singer. And he's also uh, an amazing pianist. Amazing, with an incredible amazing pianist, yes. uh, dexterity that very few people have. Yes. Uh, he's extremely talented. And uh, he composed uh, almost, uh, he composed half of the album, and the other half was composed by uh, Mimis Plesas. Um, who now, is... who, didn't Mimis Plesas discover you? Yes. Okay. And it actually happened in a very funny way. I'll tell you a little story about it. When I was uh, right before my 18th birthday, uh, a common friend we had uh, called him up and said, Mimis, I'd like, you, I'd like to introduce you uh, to this young kid. He's a singer and I think he's good. And the answer was, Tell that kid that he's very happy because today, he's very lucky, sorry, because today is the last day in my life that I'm hosting an audition for young artists. Oh my God. And I was sent to his house right away. Uh, and that's where he heard me. Uh, Mentored he, you? 
Yes, he told me a few words that I will never forget. And uh, I was actually on tour with him. Three days later, we started performing together and oh we did more God. than 40, 50 concerts together around Greece and Cyprus. And yes. uh, he was a real mentor. You've been very fortunate. You've worked with a lot of wonderful people. Would you like to mention some other artists that you've worked with? And recently, of course, not recently, rather, in Athens, you were at the Arena. You were part of the Arena International Music Festival. Yes. Uh, which was... I was invited by a, another great friend of mine, um, someone who has supported me a lot, especially in my earlier days, but he still is a very good friend. It's Mario Frangoulis. Uh, which and, we adore, uh, adore Mario <laughs> Frangoulis. Well, he's a great, great singer. He's, uh, and apart from that, and apart from the fact that he's an enormous artist, he is an incredible human being. Uh, he's a very generous um, person and he's someone who has supported me a lot. So in 2008 he invited me, he did a series of concerts at the Athens Arena where he invited um, many of his international friends. They all came to Athens and they sang with him. So he gave me the chance to be on stage with Lucio Dalla, with Justin Hayward from the Moody Blues, with Madeleine Peru, and of course with one of my idols, um, Lara Fabian. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the French. Yes. Fabulous singer. Yes, and that's how it all started little by little, um, my journey outside of Greece as well. Well, you are also a, a warm, wonderful soul, just like Mario Frangoulis is, and very, very, very talented. And uh, I want to know about who influenced you in your youth, and who did you kind of have as an idol? Um, who did you want to be? It's, it was actually three women, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of rare for a boy. Mm -hmm. um, my first idol was Nana Muscuri, Nana Muscuri, the great the great. Greek. Nana Muscuri, the great. Yes, yes, the great Greek singer who, as you may know, she's the best-selling female artist of all times. Of all times. Uh, and um, I always looked up to her because apart from the phenomenal voice that she had, I always admired the fact that, you know, she left Greece and managed to become who she became and, and, and live this life and this international career across the world. I thought it was just incredible and phenomenal. So she was my first idol. Was that your dream as well? You wanted to become an international star? Yes, my dream has always been to, to, to travel and uh, from country to country and to sing from, from language to language. Partly also because I was half Greek, half French, so I have both cultures in me, so it was kind of a, it was evident that I, was, uh, that I wanted to do that. The other two idols? The other two were Maria Callas, uh, the great. The great. You the have legendary. mentioned only great people today. <laughs> yes, well, we're Greeks. We have These to. These are the bright people to, I, to, <laughs> to, to look up to. So, Maria Callas was my other idol. When I was 12 years old, I, I uh, discovered her by chance listening to um, a CD that was given to me, and I was mesmerized by the character and, and the strength and the personality, the personality of this woman. And then a little bit later in my teens, I uh, found, um, I, I discovered Lara Fabian, uh, or Lara Fabian, as they call her here, who was, by the way, performing at Carnegie Hall a few... Just recently, uh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. 10 days ago. And um, I loved Lara because she, at the time, was a 26-year-old woman who, um, you know, who had a huge success, and she had the strength and the, and the courage to be um, who she wanted to be. She wrote her own songs, uh, and she went against... Uh, the tides, if you want. She, she of who they wanted her to yes, be. She exactly. became who she wanted to become. Exactly. Are you becoming who you want to become? I think so. Uh, it took me a little time to realize what I wanted to be. I mean, I always knew I wanted to be a singer. It's just that when you're very young and you're at the beginning of your career, you, you're under a lot of pressure from the people in the industry or the people around you who um, have a vision of what they, they want you to become. But that's not necessarily who you are. So um, it always works that way, and you have to ha be able. There's very few artists that that just you know strike back and say, "Hey, this isn't really me." Exactly. You have to be strong, and you have to be very patient, because you know when you're 20 or 21 or 22, you all you want to do is do an album and be out there and go to TV shows and radio um, interviews and everything. Get it out there. Exactly. But then you have to realize that is this what I want to do or not? Because you can be a little bit patient and the right thing will come a little uh, later. And I can't complain. <laughs> you cannot complain. You've been very successful. Your second album, uh, Perno Anasa, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, was also very, very popular. Uh, tell me, it was a little more personal. It was because it was the first time that I uh, dared to uh, sing my own songs, the songs that I had written, because mm -hmm. uh, my first record was, like we said, composed by Corcolis and Plesa. So this time, I wanted it to be different, um, and I wanted to put out there what I had in my in my soul. So yes, it was a very different album, and I had a beautiful duet with Mario mm -hmm. Frangoulis on that record, which was called Stizgisti Nakri. Uh, I wanted to ask you something before we move on to what you're doing today. Um, do you prefer singing Greek, French, or English? <laughs> what do you feel more comfortable in? Um, the truth is that I'm messed up. <laughs> <laughs> you're no, you're confused. You don't know which... <laughs> but well, what comes more natural to you? Is it Greek or all is, of it, them. is it French? All of them are equally natural to me. Um, you feel every yes, word. Yes, I, I, I dream in English, I count in French, <laughs> I swear in Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect combination, you got the best of all three. <laughs> so, you know, I can't, uh, I can't make the distinguish between the three. Um, you know, I love all three languages. Of course, my French and my Greek are better than my English because I learned English much, much later in my life. But um, you're not translating as if you know. You're not thinking in Greek to translate to English. You just, no. you're just, you're. No. It's automatic for you now. Yes, it is. It is. And I've spent a lot of time in the States now, so yes, you know, you I have. You have to. You have to. You have to. But it's. Um, I enjoy singing in all languages. Uh, it's a real pleasure. It's a gift. And now I want to go back to your idols. I want to know, other than all the, these wonderful three uh, lovely ladies, wasn't there any other artists that inspired oh, yeah, you in some sure. way you listened to? Yes. Many, many people. Um, for sure, Sting was a great uh, influence in my life, and Freddie Mercury. I used to spend hours watching his videos and then because you know he was a, a, a very particular stage animal yes he had this energy that very few people in the history of music yes. had so perfect for he, broadway he was yes. doing musicals instead of concerts that's yes. what i he, feel when he, i watch him. he was a real showman and he gave it all he mm -hmm. gave it all on stage and apart from that he had a voice that was he had the voice of a, of a classically trained singer mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons i also study my voice every single day religiously and i i keep doing my uh, my uh, vocal lessons and everything because you know it's it's very important it's a muscle you have to keep it yeah. Um, in shape. <laughs> what is George Perry's regimen? What is a, a singer's regimen of, you know? Well, I can tell life? you my, what is your life my regimen. Uh, it depends. Uh, if I'm on tour, I will wake up early in the morning, uh, eight or nine o'clock. Um, I will not speak for the first hour so that the, the vocal cords can, you know, wake up on their own. Uh, then I will have to uh, take some breakfast, uh, have some breakfast, and uh, I'll do my emails because, you know, nowadays that's all you do. You're that's stuck all, in front of your enough. computer that's, that's for hours. hours. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, time, but and anyway. then at about 11 or 12, I'll start doing uh, some exercises, some vocalizing. I will always... Every day? Every day. So every day you are training your voice. Yes. The way we train our Six bodies. days a week. I'm, I'm support, my teacher says I have to leave one day for rest. Uh, yes, exactly. I have to rest and not think of my voice at all. Uh, but when I'm a co on con in concert, um, I'll always have pasta at noon because the, the carbohydrates give you energy for a longer period of time. And then, you know, little by little, you, you go to the theater, you start doing the sound check, and then you go back to your dressing room and you, you I have to do some vocalizing again to warm up for the second time and then... How long is the warm-up? How, ma how many hours is the warm-up? Oh, no, it's very short. It's 20 minutes. Oh, okay. That's it, 20, 30 minutes, not more than that. Because mm -hmm. then you got to give it all on stage. <laughs> how did you feel the first time you were in front of a stage, an audience? Oh. Do you remember that experience? Terrified. Uh, it was actually in Athens. It was the first concert I did with Minis Blesas. Mm -hmm. It was... Oh, were it you was nervous? The, oh, my God. My legs were shaking. My <laughs> knees were trembling. <laughs> Did you get over it right away when you opened your mouth? No, actually, I didn't. <laughs> Come on, I, I think that I didn't get over it until days afterwards. <laughs> um, you know, through the years now, I've managed to to control my anxiety and my because I, I used to be a nervous wreck every time I had a concert. Throughout Before. the day, I was a nervous wreck. What 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 are you afraid of? I don't know. It's facing all these people. Um, it's. Uh, 
the fear of the unknown, I guess, and you don't want to let these people down because they came to see you and they, they love you, they support you, uh, and you mean something to them, and your music speaks to their to their souls. So if you're not up to the standards, or up to your standards... Um, I think that's what it is. You, you're your hardest critic. I think it's, it's a little bit of both, because you know what people expect from you, and you want to give it to them, and you want to give even, even more than what they expect from you. Mm -hmm. So um, that puts a lot of pressure, <laughs> and it makes you, you know, um, scared, to put it mildly. Yeah. And, um, and but then, you're not scared anymore. I am. <laughs> Are you? I am. And it oh, also no, depends don't tell, on... Don't, he's lying, he's lying. <laughs> no. And it also depends on the venue. I mean, last year, um, Mario actually invited me to do uh, the Herod Atticus Theater with him, Toirodio. What a privilege. Which was, you what know, a beautiful theater. of course, and it was my dream Ancient theater. To, to, to set foot on that stage. And I was so nervous. You know, the dressing rooms are... Um, uh, are downstairs, exactly. correct? Exactly. And I was so nervous that I, I just couldn't climb up the stairs. Uh, so my, my assistant came and picked me up and she dragged me all the way up. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I changed my mind. <laughs> She's like, yo, you listen to me. You go up there and stop it. <laughs> so she dragged me up there. It was very funny. Um, but, but we're not you know. having these experiences anymore, are we? <laughs> um, no, unless it's a very, very important uh, concert. Like uh, a few days ago at Lincoln Center, I was a little... Uh, well, quite nervous. I highly doubt it. You did not seem nervous at all, by the way, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He had a fabulous performance at the Allen Room, uh, the magical Allen Room at Jazz Lincoln Center. Yes. Um, uh, that was a fabulous performance. And you work with a lot of wonderful people on this project. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, what we did was uh, we launched my new album, my new English album, that will be released here in America and Canada and then in a few markets around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the spring. Picture this. Picture this. And I That's love what this. It's this is a great title. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so during the concert, we presented the album, and I also did um, a song in Greek and a few in French. Um, and the concert was filmed because it's going to be broadcast on TV throughout the year mm -hmm. and released on DVD uh, a little bit later. Um, so it was a very important event. I'm very happy uh, it all went well. It did. So, We're very um, proud of you. You had a great turnout. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm a huge fan and you oh, will be too. You. If you do not know who George Paris is, please look him up. Mm -hmm. Buy his wonderful, wonderful music. Uh, picture this, his latest album just released January 2014. Uh, George, uh, I want I want to ask you a question. What song make brings tears to your eyes that you sing? Is there a song that moves you? Many many songs move me. Um, the one I can think uh, right now is a song that I don't sing anymore, for the same reason that you asked me because I get too emo emotional when I sing it, and it's a song called Harti Noto mm -hmm. uh, It's a Greek song by Manos Hadzidakis that Nana Muscoli sang. Many, many, many years Why ago. Why does it make you so emotional? Because... Um, what does it remind you of? It takes me back to my childhood, which was not very easy. It was a very difficult childhood because my parents divorced when I was very young and it was a very violent and difficult divorce. So um, I remember listening to this song, which says, Αν με πίστευες λιγάκι, θα σαν όλα If you If you could believe in me, anything could be possible. Um, and at that time, that's when I realized I wanted to sing and that's when I realized that I would have to believe uh, in me to become who I wanted to become. So it's a song that still brings tears to my eyes whenever I, uh, whenever I hear it and whenever I sing it. All great artists have pain. <laughs> yes. Pain, passion, it's all the same. It's life. Yes, it's life. It's and that's life. beautiful. And you bring a lot of emotions to people through your music. And we're yeah. very, very happy uh, to have you here. And we're very proud that you're Greek, as well as French, of course. Thank you and so much. And that you have expanded to the to United Greek. States. Thank Would you. you like to tell us a little bit about what's going on with the youth and the new, the, the, the new artists in Greece? How do you see their future? What's going on with the situation in Greece? I think that... Um, there, there are many, many great new artists coming out in Greece. There's a newer generation of artists. Um, there's no point in naming names. Um, I'm sure you know them, like Natasha Bofilio and Eleonora Zuganelli. And uh, there's a few people who are very, very talented. And they bring a new uh, wave 
of artistry in, 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 in the music of the country, uh, of course things are not easy anymore. They're not how they used to be because a record label will not pay for the production of an album anymore. So when you're young, you have to find a way of doing this on your own. Mm -hmm. So it makes things much more difficult, even though you know you have the internet that can help you. Mm -hmm. um, I was very fortunate to be one of these last artists, young artists, um, who was supported by the system. Um, but I'm very optimistic. I'm a very optimistic person. And I think that out of this whole financial and social crisis and political crisis, I am sure that many, many uh, good things will come out of that. And, uh, you know, we the Greeks, we're very, uh, we're proud people. We're smart when we want to. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when we're under pressure, finally we start supporting each other. And, we are uh, resilient. I think yes. the Greeks are resilient. Yes. And, uh, and that's what's happening right now. I think we're starting to support each other, help each other, and realize that, you know, it's up to us yeah. to, uh, to, 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 to be winners out of all this. Well, you're a great example. George Perry's, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave you off with two wonderful videos and, and two beautiful songs. George, thank you so much, and we will be following you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting career. me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Τρίτο στεφάνι, καρδιά μου τι να σε κεράσω Που δεν με πιάνει, λίγα κι ο ύπνος να ξεχάσω Σαν παραμύθι, γιαγιά εκάβη μάνα νίνα Φωτιά στα στήθη, κόκκινη μοίρα σερπαντίνα Χαμένα, χαμένα Πιο πολλά κορμιά κουρασμένα Κορμιά δειλά που πήγαν, που φύγαν Το συγνωστή στις νύχτας στον χώρο έχουν πιάστη Το πρώτο στεφάνι βαθιά πληγή Το δεύτερο φτάνει σε άλλη γη Το τρίτο στεφάνι μια συντροφιά Που ζήσαμε αυτήν η ομορφιά